You're listening to Opinions of Beer. I prefer mead. You sent me to hell, Jason. I really just want to make everybody jealous. <laughs> I'm a person from Earth. Listen, what are we talking about? I reckon it sounds like opinions and beer. You can do it, dingo. Oh, I'm good. You're the smartest dumb guys I've ever met. <laughs> And three, two, theme song happened. Hello, this is a Adam from Opinions and Beer. You're listening to Opinions and Beer, or so our theme song suggested. Yeah. Today I'm with Eamon. <laughs> you just heard the theme song. <laughs> the Eamon. The, I'm also with <gasps> Edray1416. Yo. Today... We are talking about Godzilla. Well, well, wait one second. How how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. All right, Ed Ray, how about you? Oh, I'm relaxed. All right, that's cool. Yeah, we can keep going. <laughs> okay. Um, today's beer of the day is Gigantic Ginormous Imperial IPA. Oh, shit. It is beer number eighty-eight. Is from the ginormous. Is it? Is it? It's got like a Gundam. On oh, it's the box Gigantic side. Brewing Company. This is a ginormous Imperial IPA. It has a giant Gundam type mech character on it. Something you might see in a Godzilla movie. Yeah, like a kaiju type. Like bomb. a kaiju type movie. It honestly kaiju looks fighter like uh, some of the. Uh, it is early ones. It is eight point eight percent in alcohol by volume. Slightly lower than some of the um, double IPAs we've been trying recently. I just what, what inspired you to grab this one? I've never uh, I've never heard or seen anything uh, about I've, this one. I've been looking at it. I was waiting for them to kind of cycle it out to have a newer one on the shelf because pe- people hadn't really been buying it. But maybe they actually have been buying it because. I, I went back and there was like just a whole bunch more and they like, they were starting to sell down I'm like oh shit this might be just be a popular brew so I'm like I'm gonna buy this for I want to buy this I want to save it for a monster episode or some kind of something and I wanted to, and I'm like oh you know Godzilla just came out yeah it sure did gonna buy this uh when th- this is not a Godzilla review maybe down the line we'll do a review and maybe we'll find yeah. another uh beer that closely resembles Godzilla but this is just <laughs> I want, this episode is more of like the history of Godzilla and sort of the setup of, you know, in filmmaking about Godzilla I want to talk about. True. Um, hey, also, um, there have been a couple of uh, other current events. We don't do too many current events, but there's a couple of things that recently happened that we should talk about. Yes. And uh, someone, someone just suggested that uh, we should t- discuss Robert Pattinson. Or Pattinson. Robin Pattinson as uh, is he confirmed? Yes, for, for the next Bert, Batman movie. He is completely confirmed. Completely con- confirmed. All right. So what is this supposed to be? Is this like an origin film? Is it a oh, I don't uh, know. continuation? I guess it's an origin. Have they? It, are there any details besides the actor himself? No. Oh no. The um. I know they have a whole bunch about the Joker movie coming um, out, but what if Robert Pattinson's only going to be Batman in the Joker movie for like five minutes? <laughs> Maybe I don't think he's going to be in the. I don't think Batman's going to be in the Joker movie at all. Well, he's supposed uh, in the the Killing Joke storyline. Doesn't Batman appear for like ten seconds? Like, doesn't Maybe. Batman do something that knocks but, him? Into the pit or something. This this Batman, I mean, okay, so this Joker and the new Joker movie coming out. Speculation is that it's going to be the storyline of which Joker is Batman's half brother. Half brother. Yeah, uh, where um, Mr. Wayne, Batman's father, had an affair, and it's Joker's. Uh, j- Produ- and jo- produce okay, Joker. so it's gonna be like a, a almost like a JoJo's uh, bizarre adventure. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Where, is. Okay, the storyline for that is uh, there's like uh, uh, Jonathan Joestar is a wealthy uh, 
wealthy character and then like uh, this other character is introduced later on that's almost like a half brother to him uh, Dio Brando and uh, Dio is just super evil from the beginning to the end Hey, I'm gonna waterfall your water because I feel like my palate's ruined. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, I would say that it relates to if there was a JoJo's. See, here's the thing: if there was a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, I would cast Robert Pattinson as Dio Brando, like day one, and I think that would be a good fit, and that would be a good movie. I think Robert Pattinson would make would have made a good um. Uh, uh, futuristic Batman. What's that one? Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond. He made a good Batman yeah, he, Beyond. Yeah, yeah. So and they, and they brought and they would bring back Michael Keaton as the original Bruce. Yeah, Bruce that Wayne. One, oh, that's yeah. I've seen that that fan theory, and I think that that's a phenomenal theory. I tell you, um, I'm glad we're talking about the things that Robert Pattinson did good in, because I don't think. That Robert Pattinson would do a good job as Batman. And it's, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I know that a lot of people hate on him and whatnot. I don't really hate on him for his acting. I just don't think that he could do that role. Like, I don't I don't see it in his wheelhouse to do that role. Or in his face, really. Yeah, no, he doesn't really have it. The... But then again, you know, he's, uh, he's mainly going to be wearing, like, a mask. So, okay. you yeah. know, what does it matter? So it's all his voice. Yeah. I haven't seen his voice acting, really. Yeah, I'm sure he has. I'm sure he has a great Batman voice. Unless he's trying to do Christian Barrel. He tries to do Christian Bale's impersonation. We're the vampires. <laughs> We're the vampires. <laughs> Ed Ray, any thoughts on Batman and who should play Batman? I don't think uh, that Pattinson guy would be a great fit for Batman at all. Who who would be want to who would be the best fit for Batman right now? And then who would be the best Batman in your mind period? Mm, for now. Yeah. That's that's a tough one because I if don't you, I meant like uh like do one that you think would play a good Batman right now. And then, after that, say, if you could have anybody that could ever play a Batman, even if they don't fit, who would you have be? As far as somebody who could be a good fit for Batman, now, I wish I could tell you that answer because I don't know anybody in Hollywood. Okay. And as far as... Well, who's your, like, like, uh, who's, maybe some of the Ed older... Ray, do you think Jonah Hill actors. would be a good, um, Batman? No, he wouldn't. How about Channing Tatum? Would Channing Tatum be a good Batman? I guess. He might be a good brooder. I could I could kind of see it. I think Channing Tatum would be a good... Not really. <laughs> but yeah, I know, right? It's like, it's sad. sadly... Who's the first person you said? Jonah Hill? Jonah Hill. Uh, what about the guy that uh, uh, plays Scott Pilgrim? Um, what's that? No, that little skinny shut guy? up. Maybe You're talking could, about Michael Sarah? Michael, yeah, my, Michael Sarah could do uh, Batman he could be, Beyond. He could be like a skinny penguin. He could be penguin. Batman Beyond. He could play a skinny penguin he's a, he's or skinny, something. A skinny, angry penguin. <laughs> Ooh, Ooh, yeah, Michael Sarah Riddler. Riddler. So should we just like recast uh, Jim Carrey as the new Batman again? That's you think Jim Carrey like should be super, Batman? Super cartoony. Uh, I don't know. Jim Why can't we get Michael Keaton to be Batman again? Okay, okay. I mean, I kind of agree with that. I know, I know, Michael Keaton's old, but I think he's more talented than because most people. Because he's Birdman now. I think, uh, I think uh, maybe a young Sean Bean would have been a decent Batman. Young Sean Bean. Yeah, I guess the guy be like a dark-haired person. But he would die. He, maybe he'd be a good Bruce Wayne. <laughs> yeah. Or not Bruce Wayne. Uh, uh, Papa Papa Wayne. I forget the one. That, okay. Yeah, yeah. He'd be a good dad character to die. Yeah. Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. You think he'd be a good Batman? And he essentially is already playing Batman. I mean, Except Iron the Marvel Man. Batman. Yeah, yeah, Iron Man's character was almost the same thing. So, um, I think that he doesn't really have the face. I think his face is too chiseled uh, okay. for for Batman. Well, let's 
as weird as that sounds. Gigantic, ginormous imperial IPA. Well, you you haven't you haven't answered though, Adam. Eight point who 8. would be? I said some weird things. Who would be? Who do you think would be the best Batman right now? Right now, the best Batman would have to be. There's no like, there's no badasses, I guess. Or there's no like, um, who's got, who's a cool guy? Ryan Reynolds, I guess. Oh, Ryan Reynolds would be a good. Uh, Ryan Reynolds would be. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds would be a good Batman. I would like to see Ryan Reynolds at some like fancy dance parties or whatever, with like a bunch of money, just doing kind of crazy Batman shit. Because I think I think the uh, Ryan Reynolds could pull off the the alter ego. But I'm not sure he'd be able to pull off the Batman. You think Ryan Reynolds is more of a um, a Robin or a Nighthawk? Yeah, I think he'd be like honestly an adult, adult Robin. I think he'd be a good Nighthawk. Can you imagine a Samuel L. Jackson? A, a Samuel L. Jackson Batman. <laughs> but Gidormus IPA. I'm gonna crack this baby open. All right, and the uh, the other current event that I thought that was relative uh, that should be brought up is the fact that uh, the the uh, Mortal Kombat 11 has now done a, a teaser trailer for their first DLC. And normally, like I wouldn't bring up video game DLC as a talking point, but the character that they're releasing is one of them is Spawn. And this is kind of big because we brought this up for uh, a while back because we we were talking with Michael Jai White about it. And then we even tried to reach out to Todd McFarlane to have him on the show, but he wasn't available to come on. And now, like, we kind of, like, put two and two together. And the reason why, we believe, is the fact that he had been working in the background on on, uh, Mortal Kombat 11 with uh, another realm studios which i think is pretty cool that's pretty cool so spawn um, versus uh jacks yeah and also they were uh saying that uh jeremy renner is you know what's crazy like, almost like pretty much like confirmed to be in the new you know spawn how movie. crazy it would be if if um because the big rumor or the big thing was they wanted terry cruz to be jacks or whatever you, you see those uh those character arts of terry cruz as jacks It'd be so crazy for him to get Jax. Seeing how Terry Crews and Michael J. White have been like kind of like going back and forth, back and forth, roles. Kind of, I mean, especially because I mean, we you heard it in our Michael J. White interview, which you can go listen to anytime on iTunes or uh, Google Play, and um, you yeah, because you heard him say that he wasn't he like supposed to be in Expendables? Expendables. Michael Jai White was supposed to be in Expendables, and Terry Crews Crews, uh, ended up being that spot. Is really one of the only ones that, when you're watching the movie, kind of feels like his he's out of place for that type of character. In my opinion, I didn't feel like Terry Crews fit that role. Like I thought he was like a little too. Like I think that Terry Crews, a lot of his acting capability and stuff comes out yeah he can do action but like come on like the first first thing i remember seeing terry cruz in was dancing in a car with white chicks like yeah exactly and it was it was funny because he was such a big guy you know yeah so this big strong tough guy that would break you in half and uh (laughs) he, he kept talking about banging this uh the the white girl in the car and that's what white chicks was about it was so funny it was a great movie but do i think that that guy could randomly pick up like an m16 and then just be like blowing people away and shooting grenades and shit like that like i just i don't feel like terry cruz fit that role no like he he can make some damn good because well, it wasn't spice because it was because even michael Jai white says you know the role was kind of written for yeah. him to play it, but you know Michael J. White at the time didn't feel like the role was big enough. Didn't have enough scenes in it. You know he he felt like well no 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 what he, what he was saying is that it would it's the his manager was the one who was saying like you shouldn't really take this role because it seems like it's like a 
kind of in passing role. Okay. And then later he found out that it was, you know, supposed to be like a, a big role. Yeah. And he said, because well, what he told us was that Sylvester Stallone told him, like talked to him and was like, hey man, why didn't you take that role? We yeah. wrote this fucking, yeah, <laughs> wrote this scene we wrote for, this you. for you. For you. That's crazy. Yeah, that's just bad management, man. Our, our I guess questionable management. Questionable. And it seems like stuff like that is going on with a lot of the people that we did interview. Yeah. So, Ed Ray 1416, we, um, should we start off with our episode? Or, or should we start off with our review of this uh, ginormous, gigantic, gigantic Imperial IPA? And then let um, Ed Ray do his uh, wine? Let's, I, would, I would say let's reverse that role. Let's uh, let uh, Ed Ray have a first go at this for one. Ed Ray, we're going to give you the wine of the day. Okay, today's uh, review of this wine is called Barefoot Merlot. It was made in California, so let me go ahead and read this. Barefoot Merlot is a luscious, wi- luscious wine with alluring flavors of boysenberry and chocolate. Hints of anise and subtle tannins complement the decadent, silky finish. So this is a combination of boysenberry and chocolate instead of your traditional red wine. Okay, that's uh, very interesting. Very interesting because boysenberry is very rich in antioxidants. So this is going to make the wine even so, more interesting to sniff. So you said one word that I'm, I don't think that I'm very familiar with. You said like an- anise? Anise yeah, uh, uh, anise is supposed to be a sweet herb, so this could be a very sweet wine. It's actually okay. used in a lot of root beers. Root beers? Okay. All right, well, I'm already smelling the flavor, and it's it's very good. I mean, I think it's the uh, smell of the boysenberry, which has a very distinct smell compared to either grape or blueberry or whatever. So now I'm going to go ahead and take a – wait a minute – did I forget to mention the alcohol by volume again? You did. Sure. All right. So according to... Does it say on there what the alcohol by volume is? Oh, yes, it is. It is 13% alcohol by volume. Woo! Now I'll go ahead and take a sip. Very sweet. Very good because of the anise herb. Like I said, it, anise is ha, has a sweet uh, is a sweet herb like stevia or whatever. So okay. this is where the sweetness comes from. And there's a little bit of sweetness from the boysenberry as well. So that is why this wine is very good. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a nine out of ten. A nine out of ten. Wow, right out of the gate. With a barefoot. Okay. You know, you know. I think barefoot is one. Is barefoot considered like a really good wine? Well, it's or is uh, it considered like our do do wine connoisseurs scoff pretty, at it? it? They probably scoff at it. It's a pretty common uh, wine. Uh, it's found in it's kind of like one of the mass produced ones. Yeah, it's kind of like bottom shelf. But that doesn't mean it's bad. No, right? Like, it's actually like pretty good, honestly. I thought it was interesting he mentioned chocolate. Yeah, chocolate. And um, so yeah, is that crazy, Ed Ray? I. That this is a mass-produced wine, and you rated it more so than a previous wine you've drank. Well, not all quality wine is going to be better than the mass-produced wine. I mean, you can get a home-brewed wine like a Muscadine wine and compare it to a mass-produced. Sometimes the mass-produced can be better than the home-grown. It all depends on how you make the wine or how the factories make the wine. What would you say flavors are coming out the strongest in it? I want to say that the strongest flavor is, of course, the anise. Cool, cool, cool. My uh, my beer is so hoppy, I can see it just... Oh, okay, yeah, let's take a look at this. And this is the this is gigantic. What would you say the... Uh, gigantic Brewing Company, ginormous Imperial IPA. It is 8.8% in alcohol by volume. Imperial IPA, in, in the search of a hoppier... Better equipped ginormous, we are launching an ever-changing series of ginormous Imperial IPAs developed at our secret testing facility deep in SE Portland. For the sixth in the series, we focus on the bright citrus from Galaxy and Cascade hops. Did you sip it? Yeah, I did. That's a pretty intense flavor, man. It's a. It is packed. 
with flavor. Um, but at the same time, I will say that it's kind of a smooth IPA. Dude, it's smooth, but you, you can taste the hops, though. Yeah, no, no, no. The hops are just... It is packed full. That like first sip is just hoppy. Yeah, it's like a big punch. Um, but it's not bad. And they're saying, like, notes of, like, citrus and stuff. I definitely got that. I like this one. Yeah, it's honestly uh, pretty good. Where's the uh, gigantic brewery based out of? I believe it said Portland, Oregon. Portland, Oregon? Okay. I wonder what inspired the box art for this. Um. Not saying. Nothing can dim the light which shines from within. Yeah, Portland, Oregon. So what would you say is uh, some of the defining factors between this and maybe some of the other beers we've tried recently? Because, like, you know, like, recently we did uh, the double IPAs. Right. Um, well, I guess I don't know what the difference is because it's just, it's like literally 1% off of the others. Oh, you mean by, like, alcohol volume? Yeah. Yeah, it's not much different, but I feel like... But there's no... I don't get no booziness from it. Yeah. The the booziness is like... There's no booziness in this. Yeah, do you feel like maybe the double IPAs, it's like it's like folded over almost, you know? Like, I get it. I don't know. It's so strange. But this one, it definitely has, like... It's very unique. Like, you can't see through it. I feel like it's a complete... It's a, it's like a really complete IPA. Yeah. Uh, I think that this is probably how it's like it's supposed to be made. <laughs> it's like you taste the hops. It's bitter, but the aftertaste isn't bitter. Like these other ones. No. It's, you know? Uh, yeah, it's like it's, it's, like it's, it's got bitter, a little bit of citrus. But it doesn't... The bitterness doesn't stick there like uh, chewing up medicine. I think it's I think it's weird that you were saying that this was on the shelf for so long. I'm not gonna lie, man. This is one of the. Uh, no, 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 I thought it was, but I went back and I think it sells out just so much. Like the the more time I spend with this, this is uh, like probably the best IPA I've had. Yeah, this is like really good. Yeah, like I'm um, I'm not even joking. I mean, about for that. I mean, it's it's like it's six dollars a bottle. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. See, that's not that's not that bad for this either. No. <laughs> well compared to six dollars for a six pack or whatever <laughs> yeah you know, i'm sorry whatever it is eight dollars for a six pack eight dollars for six twelve dollars for twelve pack i don't know um, but i mean yeah dude um i've i don't know i've never seen what like the only beer that i've seen that pours out like this and looks so full that you can't see through is like maybe some I've had like a couple of like uh, tarts or whatever they're called uh, sours yeah yeah sours it kind of look like that sours and ciders it looks like a cider in all honesty I don't know it's it's kind of beautiful <laughs> what would you uh, what would you rate this beer I'm I'm gonna give it a like a pretty strong nine. Like yeah, but that's on a scale of IPAs. Like I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it. We haven't given an IPA a, really good. a ten yet, so we, well, I guess uh, I'll give it a nine. I mean, Sticking it is, out for that one that just is just blows me away. I guess. I mean, but this one's pretty fucking high up there. Like this is my number one so far. Definitely. So. It's crisp. It's that's the thing. It's crisp, but it also hits all those notes. Of what yep. an IPA should taste like. And I'm just, I'm waiting for that. Like, almost every IPA is, is a little too strong at one at one certain thing. And then the aftertaste is almost always uh, where it fails. And it's, I just think that it's so cool that this be- this beer is unique in the sense that the aftertaste doesn't fail. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't bring it back, like, in a negative light. You're like... You're like, damn. I let Lauren taste it. She hates IPAs. 
Thinks they all taste like medicine. Well, I, I mean, Lauren, I'm drinking uh, wine, so. Lauren's drinking wine, so our palate's actually probably ruined. Yeah. I mean, did yeah. you did you know though that like, um, it's kind of weird because I feel like uh, it's so complicated. Did you know that um, when uh, in beer judging in beer contest, uh, I learned that actually the. Fr- the the furthest out your beer is from getting tasted, the harder it is to win. I have no fucking clue what you mean. What elaborate? What do you mean? So like in beer, beer co- in beer tasting contests, like for like like where, where beers get judged and like win medals and shit. Okay. Like it's actually a luck of the draw because actually if whoever gets picked first. basically whoever picks whoever like the closest to like first getting drank. I have the best chances of winning because by the time you get down the line of like your fiftieth so, beer, so many flavors. Your your palate's wrecked. I feel like they would need to like yeah like switch out judges. In fact, in fact, they even do. I think they. I think judging judges they have one ounce glasses, so not even five ounce tasting glasses, but just like a simple like one ounce straight shot. Do you th- do you feel like you could get the entire just the gist of like an entire beer from one ounce? I don't have a one ounce glass to know what a one ounce is. I guess this is five ounces, so I guess oh, so these are five. So it'd be oh yeah, man, like, yeah, you'd have to have some pretty powerful uh, beers like for that just in order to be able to. Uh, Except all of the flavor and just that small amount, you know what I'm saying? Which might win. Those more to win, obviously. Yeah. I have seen them sell like a flight that has test tube tubes. Oh, really? They sell flight test tubes? Yeah. Yeah, That's a solid nine. So. Yeah, man. That's a good Uh, beer. I mean, this is one of the beers that every time I drink it, like, (laughs) I feel like. I feel like every time I go to drink it, I'm like, here it comes to let me down, and it does it. It just picks me up. <laughs> so, exactly. So, Ed Ray 1416 do you know anything about Godzilla? Did you ever watch any of the Godzilla movies? Uh, let's see. I do remember watching clips from the 1950s and then maybe in the 1960s, but the first feature that I watched was from 98. And it was like oh, a terrible Ma- one. It was a terrible one. <laughs> Are you talking about the one with uh, Matthew Ed Broderick? Spectre Gadget? Yeah. Yeah, that was the one. That was a terrible one. Wow, is it terrible? Okay, so y'all want no, y'all want some lore on this? So Godzilla two thousand, they don't they in in Godzilla two thousand don't they kill. The Godzilla 1998, and they okay, they say okay. it's not actually a so Godzilla. I don't I don't think that it's Godzilla 2000. I think that it's the second. It was the second iteration of Godzilla 2000 that they brought in because they did Godzilla, and then they got the rights back, like because they had bought the rights, and then they did the shitty Godzilla over here in America, and then. So the Japanese did another Godzilla for them, and they n- named it Godzilla 2000, and uh, kind of like tried to go like back to the roots of Godzilla because uh, that the new Godzilla was so bad. How so bad? Well, I'm just saying that that's like- what everybody thought. So they they did. They brought him back. They brought back old school Godzilla, and then they might have they made him fight. Uh, God, the other Godzilla, and they actually had to rename him. They renamed him like, uh, like dumb Godzilla or something, like in Japanese. Are you, that was like kaiju or something. Yeah, no, no, it, no. That would be flattering. No, they uh, they named it like dumb Godzilla, and then fucking killed him within twenty seconds of the film or something like that. <laughs> oh my God. Hey! Like they show, he showed up, and then Godzilla just like beat the shit out of him and killed him, and then that was like the canonical end. At least it had, at least it had Godzilla. good acting. At least all the actors acted well. Are you talking about in the '98? Yeah, the people one? were good. Uh, I mean, kinda. The people were fun to watch. 
How, dude, I don't. It was like, are they, you they, being, are you being honest right now? Yes. Because, no. All the people in the in the Godzilla movie, at least they acted like they they felt like they were in. It felt like a Marvel movie. Kinda. It did kind. Of, it did feel like a Marvel movie. I'll give you that. It had a weird sense of. It had a weird sense of adventure. The problem is, is that it was like Thor: Dark World. <laughs> no, yeah. no, dude, that's exactly no. what it was, and you know it. I like the rap. I like how. Well, I, said, I, I keep calling it a raptor scene, but they remind me of raptors. The baby Godzilla. You just said you liked that one, dude. The that baby Godzilla. Okay, like even when I was a kid, I was like, man, there's something that doesn't fucking work. And this, you know, no, you want to know what you need to do, man? What? You need to go back and watch interviews. So, okay, so we're about to, so in this episode, we are, we are going to react to old school Godzilla clip. Old school Godzilla clip? Oh, well, Godzilla scene. It's a, it's a Godzilla scene, and it's what they're building up to in this new Godzilla franchise. <laughs> Is it going to be where Godzilla's doing the flying drop kick from across the screen? Maybe. Where he does like a hundred yard drop kick? Perhaps. Oh, it's fucking great. It's so good. I've seen, trust me, I've, I know like more than one person probably should know about uh, Godzilla monsters and sh- shit like that. So I, I've got us covered in that aspect. Speaking of, have you seen any of the new Godzilla animes? That no, have come I, out I'm recently but, uh, on Netflix. I've seen like previews. It's, it's like a post-apocalyptic uh, world where like Godzilla, like literally, is like the king. I can't see that. Where kind of like uh, evolution has uh, yes, gone above evolution. and beyond. Yes, naked, <laughs> naked baby syndrome, and um, Godzilla. Was a is, is a staple, and people there there are like legit crazy Godzilla fans. Yeah, I'm one of them. So what I'm what? Trying, what I'm trying to tell you, dude, is that you need to go back. I know you're kind of praising the Godzilla '98 movie, and it should be praised in a sense because they did try and go outside of the box. But you need to go and watch some interviews with the director of Godzilla '98. That way, that you can understand why. What he did was such a travesty, and why he is such a piece of shit. <laughs> he goes on the record, and he's like, oh yeah, I have no interest in Godzilla. I don't like Godzilla. I just wanted to make a Godzilla movie, and whenever they approached me to it, I said I would do it. But he wanted like almost complete co- creative control of it, and then said that, he didn't want to do anything that like revolved around the Godzilla backstory because he didn't care about that. He wasn't a Godzilla fan. <laughs> so that was his reasoning for what <laughs> and he and he liked he yes. liked Jurassic Park and he wanted to emulate some of the success that, yes, that good. Dinosaurs movies had at that point. Well in he time. succeeded. Yeah, he did. And that's why that ra- the that's why all the baby Godzillas were like raptors and shit like that. Yeah. And it's like, I'm telling you, man, I was such a big Godzilla fan as a kid that even when that movie came out, I was like, this, you know, I love this movie. It can do no wrong. Did you like but the last one? Whenever I was a kid, I did remember seeing that raptor scene and being like, this is wrong. <laughs> this isn't Godzilla. Did you like, did you like the Brian Car- Cranston one? The previous uh, Godzilla, the the most recent one yeah. uh, that they did here in America. Yeah, before the where they kind of made it out. like about like the Marine Bros too. Yeah, um, yeah, I really like that. I think that they did a, well, the, a good job. The like, biggest complaint though was that you'd never even really seen Godzilla. Yeah, but um, I think that that's one of the things that they tried to like fix in the new one. And now. Apparently, the, I, I'm hearing the complaints. We're gonna we're gonna watch and review it in a later episode, but I'm hearing some of the complaints, and the complaints are that the new Godzilla, while it does give you more Godzilla, they, now they the people, to. but now the people characters are like they focus too much on the people characters, and the people characters suck. Oh, okay. So it's not like the last one where the people characters that they had in it. 
were kind of like these sense. Transformers style side story going on at the same time. Right. Like, because that's what I felt like the last Godzilla was kind of like a Transformers style movie almost. Okay. But I felt like that payoff whenever he uh, did like the radiation beam at the end of it was just so worth <laughs> it. Like, I, I like I got I got excited and I like yelled in my house whenever I saw that. It was great. But um, yep. I haven't haven't seen the new one yet. Uh, it was just recently released. We will be uh, reviewing that soon. Um, but I have seen a little bit of uh, footage. But of uh, Ghidorah, if Ghidorah. You know, King Ghidorah is the like three headed dragon right. that they're reintroducing. But you know, this is all build up to um, cause King it, Kong, and, King uh, Kong Godzilla. versus Godzilla. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Which okay, guys, we're gonna go ahead and do this. You, did you know that they had a uh, they previously had a King Kong versus uh, Godzilla? Movie? We're gonna react to this real quick. Do you know know what I'm talking? You about? You guys ready? 1962 fight scene. Oh, this is it. Everyone gather around. <laughs> yeah, this is what I was just talking about. Also, hey, hey, hey! Before you start this, because I already know the outcome. Um, Who's gonna win? Um. Well, I think I think Godzilla King Kong were were made by America, and so I think King Kong wins this one. Uh, but Godzilla, I mean, it makes no sense that King Kong wins because he's not really shown to have anything other than because Godzilla can knock over buildings, and King Kong just climbs King buildings. King climb them. And punch helicopters. <laughs> yeah, punches like, helicopters. I, I'm loving, okay, the very start of this video is already kind of like mind-blowing because it has, uh, there's about eight uh, big yellow balloons. <laughs> okay. Ed normal Ray, can size, you see this Normal video? size balloons, but they're supposed to look like they're lifting like King Kong into the air, and he's got like a bunch of helicopters around him, right? So like, are those supposed to be like giant hot air balloons or something. I'm just trying to figure out how they're supposed to be portraying these balloons where it doesn't look like they tied a, uh, they tied a bunch of children's balloons together <laughs> and then stuck like a baby doll to it and, and then was like <laughs> yeah yeah and then was like alright this is our movie. Okay let's react to this stuff. Oh man, it's this awesome. is fucking gold. He's tied this is why up. I love. This is why I've seen these movies. I love them. Look at this. <laughs> His eyes are open. <laughs> Said our target is over there, and they're looking at. Oh, that's definitely Godzilla. So are they gonna drop off King Kong to like? beat Godzilla's ass? I think he breaks, he, he breaks free. Oh, yeah. You can tell. You can tell that King Kong's got the bloodlust in his eyes. Then Godzilla's like, I'm the king of all oh, monsters. Shit. Like... <laughs> okay, so they dropped him. And then okay. a bunch of dust spit and he's up. sliding. Oh. oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Slide kick. Was that? Like he baseball just, slide. Yeah, he just did. He just did the baseball slide. King Kong slid down a mountain and knocked a Godzilla from the top of the mountain all the way to the bottom of it. Uh, it looks He's like tearing up fucking cities. Yeah, for no reason. He kind of just stepped on a a, a village, um, which I mean. You know, I feel like that these creatures, at a point, are pretty fucking sinuous, you know? So, right. like, so he just did that and thought, like, nothing about it. And that was not a big deal to him. Why is he hiding? Probably because he's really ugly. <laughs> Die! Die! Like, Godzilla has a face that you could bring home to mom. That King Kong is really so ugly. Ed Ray, what do you think about this so far? Oh, it's something. Okay, so it looks like King Kong is 
Oh yeah, he just grabbed Godzilla by the tail. Oh, he got a flip. Ooh, yeah. One thing you gotta remember is Godzilla's tail is very powerful. But he's grabbing him like he's, like, Koopa. Like he's Bowser. Alright, now it kind of <laughs> looks like it's gonna go into a bathroom rape scene. I'm not very comfortable with this. Oh, he threw a, a he threw a turd at him or a something. Turd. Oh. oh, there we go. That's it. Oh, he threw a rock and Godzilla slapped it back at him. Oh, what was that? Did he just do ray, his ray breath on him? Oh my god! Okay, so now the monsters have ran up and they're hugging each other. There's <laughs> looks like repeated back rubs. Ooh, oh, he did another, uh, another like... Another rape Yes. Yeah. It's like a game. Oh! Oh, okay, Godzilla just did the lizard things where, uh, lizards will sit there and they'll, like, do push-ups whenever they're, like, trying to, like, impress somebody or impress a female or they're getting ready to fight. Godzilla did a bunch of those weird chest push-ups. Uh... And then Godzilla... It looks like he's rolling, uh, and King Kong hopped on his lap. Uh, he's just jumping up and down. Oh, Godzilla, he's back up. Oh, another rock to the chest. <laughs> King Kong gets pretty excited pretty easy. Also, he's got a lot of rocks. What's funny is when there suits the fight. Just when there's people in these. So he threw a rock and then flipped twice, kind of like on his own accord, <laughs> no, and, then, knocked and then knocked out. himself out. He knocked himself out on King purpose. Kong just knocked himself out. King Kong's retarded. And now Godzilla's like kind of like showing his his butt to him. <laughs> I don't. Like Godzilla's looking over at King Kong right now, like, what the fuck's going on? He's like, wake up. I mean, this is very strange. Is this not very strange that they're like... Wait, did, did King Kong lose? Are you slapping him with his tail? He is. He's I guess. With the tail. I mean, it kind of looks like he's just... Oh, oh, shit. Oh, but King Kong's back up, I guess. I just said... Oh, Godzilla, like... Dude, he just did a fucking Spartan kick. Yeah, well, what he did was he uses his tail to pick himself up. And then he puts all of his body weight and leg strength into their chest. And man, they just kick boulders like it's nothing. He's like hitting him in the face with the rocks. This, I mean, it's kind of almost a boring fight. I kind of feel bad for King Kong. <laughs> Did they, when this was made in 1962, did they know this looked ridiculous or no? They probably saw it and thought that it was something that they could like brag about to their girlfriends. They were like, guess what we did today? We set a, we set a man in a monkey suit on fire. And uh, the guy that set him on fire was someone in a lizard suit. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it looks like King Kong has some type oh, of shit. electric, electric power there. Like he's he has, him by his like he's like giving him like Indian yeah, burns King Kong or something. Has some, like, electric ability. It's like he's like rubbing, rubbing on, giving him like static shocks. You know? Ed Ray, who do you think's gonna win this fight? Probably Godzilla. Now, are you more of a Godzilla fan or a King Kong fan? Hard to say. But anyway, hey, we're gonna we're gonna jump around this. No, well, now King Kong is forcing a tree down Godzilla's throat. Good God! 
Oh shit! Okay, Godzilla uses Ray Blast to shoot the tree out of his throat, and it was on fire and it hit. Oh King Kong. shit! <laughs> King Kong just um. Yeah, he flipped him and then did a chicken him. dance. An Irish flip. Yes. Yes. So Godzilla beat out Aladdin this weekend. Just this weekend. Yeah, that's not. That's that's not a good thing for Godzilla. Because that means that means that means Aladdin al- almost beat Godzilla in his second week or third week. Well, you know, Aladdin just came out, though. Third I, week. I, I didn't even really know that it was Aladdin's out. third week. No, that's this week. That means Godzilla's Godzilla's first week almost lost to Aladdin's third week. That's true, but... I mean, you also have to figure, like, this is a... The, that's a Disney, uh, a live no, action no, the, Disney film. They, versus no, they, they were already saying though that uh, Godzilla, the Godzilla movie, Godzilla was making less. less than half of the cost to the yeah, they, they were. They were already. It was already projected. It was projected for more. And actually, they, they're actually making less than what the projection was for Godzilla. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's not like a large Godzilla fan base. I mean, like, uh, like there is. There is, like, the Godzilla fans here and there, but it's not something that's, like... Like, if you compare Disney versus Godzilla, like, this is going to win every time. Yeah. I feel like... Wait, why? This is got to be just the weekend, because it has Avengers Endgame. It's just like... What do you mean, why? I feel like... This weekend, yeah. Because, uh... Why why Disney wins? Uh, the... I want to say Toho uh, Industries or whatever, which is the company who originally came up with Godzilla, wasn't was never ever a large film company. Like they had worked on a couple of really cool things, like I want to say like the Seventh Samurai and uh, and other things of that nature. But like nothing when they got into the like monster movie genre or whatever, like it was it was something that wasn't very wide reflected and didn't have that huge of a following like it was very culturally strongly influenced in japan for a long time until america picked it up dubbed over it changed a lot of uh the the bullshit and then added like fun fun stuff for kids in it as well and then that's whenever it really kind of blew up and right then, uh in a lot of the box offices and whatnot. So, I mean, per- personally, like, I'm excited. I like, I'm going to go watch this new Godzilla movie. I'm going to love it probably either way. Um, it, it, there's not many ways that it could go where it would really piss me off. All right. It's Godzilla. Yeah, it's Godzilla. Like, it's as long Godzilla. as there's a big fucking dinosaur, uh, lizard creature, blowing shit up and flying with using his tail to fly, and drop kicking. Like, have you seen? Have you seen the one uh, part where he sits there, and he has to get somewhere, and he's got to go real fast. So what he does is he turns around, and he uses his ray ray breath. To to propel himself backwards, <laughs> yes. and he like lifts his uh, tail yes. up, so it looks like he's like flying backwards, Dude. like off of his ray breath. Like that's what these people are capable of. So whenever you're telling me that they have a like a full uh, a full length like badass Godzilla movie this weekend with King Ghidorah and Rodan and all those other ones, like back at it and in full glory like i'm there like yeah so so i mean uh what'd you think of this last you watched that that the uh, last year's or two years ago's king kong was last year's king kong 
Tears? No, I, I didn't see that King Kong, actually. But well, this is the King Kong he's I, fighting. Th- but that King Kong um, didn't get bad reviews. No. Like it got, it got. There was there were a handful of bad reviews, but it was most mostly positively received. Wait, was, that, was that the one? Was uh, Samuel Jackson in it? And um, Samuel Jackson and Captain Marvel was in it. Captain Marvel. I think she was in it. I'm not sure. Who replaced Captain Marvel? I think the last King but, Kong um, I watched had uh, what's his name? King Kong. Uh, what's your favorite King Kong movie? The one Jack Black. Um, I don't think any. I mean, probably Mighty Joe Young. Mighty Joe Young. <laughs> Mighty but, Joe Young. I mean, I kind of, I kind of like some of the older uh, King Kong movies, like. I like the original ones. Probably my favorite iteration uh, was the version of King Kong and Alvin and the Chipmunks, where I believe that Alvin had a uh, had a dream where he uh, grew up and was King Kong. How are they? How are they fighting? Well, I believe that as a chipmunk, no. monkey, he. Uh, are you wanting a different? No. I'm, I'm trying to figure out like, like how, how does I mean they didn't really set up King Kong as like this character that's gonna fight a fire breathing dragon. I mean he's fighting big monsters. Is he? But he's well, King Kong fought big monsters. Have you have you have you seen the most yeah. recent one? What you what uh, what's your thoughts on it? Um, like, I don't... it was uh, it was okay. It was okay. King Kong beats the shit out of giant monsters. Yeah. What was his uh, most fearsome opponent in that movie? Giant monsters. Giant, I know, but like, which one? They're, just, they're all the same. They were all the same. It was like little versions and a bunch of them. And they were kind of like the... It was, it, they reminded me of a lot of the first monster... Of the monsters that Godzilla was fighting in the first movie. They were very similar. Okay. Of the, or the first of this cinematic universe. Oh, the uh, Mutos. Yes. The Mutos is what Whatever. The Brian Cranston Monsters Godzilla. Unknown Terrestrial Origin. That one. They look like those. They are like they came out of the ground and they're like these big, weird skeleton bird things. I'm, I'm probably misremembering. But uh, he, he fought them and I think he, he died or his kid died or something. I don't know. King Kong's kid da- died? Something weird. Oh, that's crazy. I can't remember it's now. Odd. Maybe that's his... Is he John Wick? No. Or whatever? Like his... Or... or uh, uh, yeah. Is it like, crazy like, how much we... I mean, just look... Look at the trailer to this Godzilla movie. And then look at what their Godzilla was. Oh, you mean like from the past? Yeah. Is it like to see... The visual differences. Um, well, it's crazy uh, in theory because you know Godzilla started as like almost like uh, an environmental warning against uh, atomic radiation and the fallout from uh, uh, the atomic drum, uh, atomic bombs dropped on yeah on Japan. So um, the really the. Co- yeah, the cult. Yeah, the culture for Godzilla. Uh, that was it. Was a huge metaphor for uh, for like uh, environmental awareness and and toxic backlash caused from the radioactive uh, leftovers. So, um, so as you can imagine, originally it wasn't very well received by Americans because you know. Yeah, yeah. So like, it what um. What you did to our lizards, you asshole. Yeah, and that was kind of like the whole thing. In fact, the story of the original Godzilla is pretty intense whenever it comes to historical accuracy, because there was a time where a boat at the beginning of most Godzilla uh, movies, they always uh, introduce like kind of like a fishing boat type. A uh, vessel or something out on the open waters that has a run-in with Godzilla, uh, some way or form, 
uh, and the guys on the fishing boat usually almost always like perish or die. And the reason why this is an ongoing theme is because uh, shortly after uh, World War II, uh, America was doing a nuclear tests on islands very, very, very close to Japan's shores. So there were fishermen, you know, one day that were just out doing, uh, doing their tests or one or they were going and fishing and they didn't realize that Americans were doing nuclear tests so close to them. So like they, what happened was they did a test and the people were in the water right next to them and, uh, like they they all got radioactive uh, sickness like nuclear sickness or whatever um and they all every everyone on the fishing boat died from later from horrible horrible like erosion is how they died because radioactive sickness is just the worst thing it's it's the most disturbing thing you'll ever ever see um um but now there is speculation on whether or not that ship was actually like a spy vessel or something like and whether it was meant to like kind of stoke the flames of war more so uh the whole backstory of it is super interesting and super uh i don't know like a, a cliche random it's a all kinds of all kinds of things. It's very interesting. So yeah, for sure. So like that's Definitely. why whenever you see all the iterations of it, they say that uh, that the blast from that day looked like the shape of like a mushroom cloud lizard creature. So that's why like Godzilla's original shape is supposed to look like like mushroom clouds. Is why, that's why he looks so like weird and like fluffy or whatever. Yeah. Is because that's what it's supposed to be. Um, yeah. Wow. The more you know. Yeah, and King Ghidorah is a dragon with three heads. <laughs> yeah, where, where does the villains come from? Oh, uh, I don't know. So like you know. Thing? Yeah, uh, Mothra. Actually, a lot of Godzilla's veterans, like Godzilla's an anti-hero. Like you want Godzilla to win all of his fights, but. He's kind of an asshole too, and most of these monsters that are introduced in Godzilla's lore, not even all of them are bad creatures. Mothra is actually supposed to be Earth's natural defense against kaiju and Godzilla and other things of that nature. So Mothra is more of Earth's savior than Godzilla is supposed to be. Oh, really? But Godzilla is just such a badass. He just kills like, got he Godzilla kills anything like that fucks with his stuff. Like it's like he has this toy chest, and he doesn't want anybody else to touch his toys. <laughs> and there's all these big mean badasses that come and they're like, "Man, that's a pretty cool toy chest you got there. Can I play with it?" And he's like, "No," and he fucking shoots radiation beams into their throats or something. Yeah, it's pretty cool. See? Godzilla versus Mega. Hey, you think they're going to introduce uh, Mega Godzilla? Yes, for certain. So Mega Godzilla's uh, story was pretty cool too. He's introduced by uh, aliens. Oh, really? Alien, yeah. Aliens come to Earth and they say that they're going to take over, um, and then Godzilla beats their ass. Godzilla kicks the aliens' asses. Right, so like their response to that is they get uh, DNA of Godzilla and they go create Mecha Godzilla, <laughs> and then bring him back down here to beat the shit out of Earth. Uh, like their storylines are great. The Godzilla <laughs> franchise is an amazing uh, uh, timeline. Right, it, it sounds yeah. amazing. No, it's it's really well done, um, and I I'm glad that this new one looks like it's kind of. Uh, uh, sticking to a lot of the root themes and whatnot, uh, they bring back a lot of uh, classic, classic, classic monsters. So, do you remember um, 
I'm trying to relate this to video games too. And there was two really, really good kaiju-esque video games. One was obviously a Godzilla game. There was like Godzilla, King of the Monsters. um, And that was a really good one because they had almost every Godzilla monster in the games. Where you could fight them uh, in a very unique style of uh, fighting game. Also though... There was an old, like, movie-style kaiju game called Destroy All Monsters. Did you ever play that? I thought it was War of the Monsters. Or War of the Monsters, yeah. Like, didn't you have it? Yes. Or? Yeah, man. That, was, that shit uh, was good. Yeah. And you could, like, dis- like you could, you could activate, like, destruct- destruction zones and, like, like certain, like, uh, one of them was you cause a giant tidal wave and you could destroy the city, like, then oh, fucking... Oh, man. The, the, like, the... You, you cause so much damage, you throw someone into, like, a building, the building collapses. That was on, uh, like, PlayStation, right? Just regular PlayStation? Um. Or was that a PS2 Might be a PS2. Thing? PS2. Man, that would be a really good one. That would be a fun one to hunt down. They, oh, they have it? On the, uh, store? I think so. Think? Yeah, that would, that would be a good one for us to all, all play sometime. Yeah. yeah or, like, something I can stream sometime. I think, they ha- fun, I think they have it on the store. I think they finally added it to the store. I'll have to I'll have to look into it, check it out. So, um, besides Godzilla movies, uh, what would you? Uh... Yeah, well, it, Sonic was pushed back. No, I mean, did you see the new? They they released the new character that they made. No, they didn't. Yes, they did. No, they didn't. What was that link then? That was a random person that did that. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, that was a random. Uh, that was like a fan made one. Yeah, fan made. Uh, a fan made. Re- showing the, they're, they're showing what fans could do. Yeah, I mean, it, I guess it worked because they delayed the movie. Man, I'm really excited. I I streamed uh, Sonic the Hedgehog two the other day, and uh, I'm really happy to uh, be able to uh, Photoshop jim carrey into all of the scenes <laughs> every single one of them i'm gonna be photoshopping jim carrey into jim carrey's it. A, yeah he's funny yeah i think that it was a good pick i like at first i uh, was i was like no that's that no but it'll work <laughs> yeah it'll 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 bring a uniqueness to the character definitely and it's gonna be really cool whenever robotnik's like smoking smoking <laughs> He's like, turning everybody into robots, somebody stop me. (laughs) Some people are mad that he's not shaped like an egg. Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah. That's their big, uh... (laughs) I mean, it's not an invalid point, though. (laughs) He's not uh, egg-shaped. I mean, he is very, like... Huh? Um... So, Lauren's showing us a picture right now. Yeah, I think that's a fan-made one. That's like a fan-made one. Yeah. Fan-made. Oh, it doesn't say that I don't think the company has released their um, actual changes yet. Okay, because I was going to say, I'm not sure really they like were, they were, they were They were showing how easy it would be to, to just put to in just like... That's like the Sonic fix. Adventure. Uh, Sonic Adventure Sonic. like they just kind of slapped on there. Yeah, they just wanted him to look like Sonic. Right. He actually has hair, though. Like, he looks like a... Oh, I don't know. He looks like a really badass. I'm going to go ahead and give a, uh, 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 the new Sonic movie a 100 out of 100. What? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I think that it's, uh, the more time that I've spent with it, I think that it's going to be the, uh, it's going to be the savior of the video game, uh, movie for That's... Us. That's just your opinion. And that's fine. Because all we got here are... <laughs> you fucking Sonic bitch. Opinions <laughs> and beer. Somebody stop me. Did you ever feel so bad inside?